Thank you for taking the time to explore the proper procedures for running compressive strength tests on 5-star epoxy grouts, including XB230, 5-star's highest strength offering with an industry-leading 23,000 PSI compressive strength. Testing high compressive strength epoxy grouts for use in applications like these can be challenging. Therefore, preparing the samples and performing the tests outlined in the ASTM C579 test standard is critical for accurate results. As a printed supplement to this video, 5 Star Tech Bulletin 210 is available as a PDF on our website through the link below this video. The first order of business is to make sure that all the required materials are available. You'll need a 2 inch brass or steel cube mold a mold release agent, a cooler or insulated box, and a compressive testing machine. In addition, the test machine must be calibrated to load rate 2, as prescribed in the ASTM C579 standard, both while unloaded and loaded during the actual test. We'll provide instructions on setting your machine to load rate 2 later in this video. If you plan to manually set your compressive testing machine to load rate 2, you'll need a dial gauge, mounting hardware, and a stopwatch. Additional requirements include an ASTM C109 tamper. If unavailable, you may use a tongue depressor or spatula. You will also need a file, scale, scouring pad, permanent marker, thermometer, and record book. The compressive strength data for epoxy grouts on most manufacturers' technical data sheets, including those from 5 Star Products, are measured using ASTM C579. Therefore, any deviation from this standard test method will likely result in lower compressive strength results than reported on the technical data sheet. So, let's get started. Spray the inside of each mold with release agent and use a brush to distribute the release agent onto the sides and bottom of each mold. If the test is to be run on samples from the active job site, it is recommended that no samples be taken from the day's first batch. Generally, the curing location is also recommended to be near where the grout samples are either taken or prepared. With the cube mold and epoxy grout ready, carefully fill the cube mold halfway with epoxy grout. If you're following our Tech Bulletin 210, we are showing method one here. Consolidate the first layer of the epoxy cube specimens using the ASTM C109 tamping procedure. Next, fill the mold of epoxy grout and consolidate again. After tamping the second time, if the epoxy no longer fills the mold, add more grout to fill the mold to a slight excess. Using your ASTM C109 tamper or tongue depressor, screed the surface from the middle of the mold to the outside. Next, remove excess grout using a sawing motion while lightly pressing down to remove air. Remove any excess until the surface of the grout is flush with the top of the mold or has a slight crown. Repeat this step from the middle of the mold to the outside in the opposite direction, cleaning off any excess material on top of the mold. Your sample's curing location will be either the field or the lab. If curing under approximate field conditions, note the temperature when the sample is taken and store the samples in a cooler or insulated box until the initial set of the design strength is achieved or as otherwise specified. If curing in the lab to develop a measurement comparable to a published technical data sheet strength, Samples should be cured under temperature conditions prescribed by the ASTM C579, which is 69 degrees to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It is not recommended that samples be transported until they have reached initial set unless otherwise specified. Record each sample's product name, batch code, aggregate amount, start time, test date, and temperature. Once the specified cube time has elapsed, it's time to demold the cube samples. Release the cured cubes from the brass mold. File off flashing edges on each load face to ensure good contact with the test machine plates, which avoids point loading. Once filed, weigh samples and record the weights in your sample record book and on each cube with a permanent marker. Tests are typically run at one day, seven days, and then 28 days. However, tests can be run at any specified intervals or conditions. Sometimes untested samples are retained should later tests be needed. Before any testing is done, set up the compressive testing machine. Five Star publishes the compressive strengths of its epoxy grouts using the ASTM C579 at a position rate of 0.25 inches per minute as load rate 2 prescribes in that standard procedure. It is crucial that the machine runs at the load rate 2 position rate 
in both its unloaded state and, most critically, during the actual test when the machine is loaded. So first, let's calibrate the machine for the load rate to position rate in the unloaded state. Compressive testing machines load or position rates are controlled by software or manually. For testing machines controlled by software, use the following procedure with the dial gauge to confirm that the position rate is as required. Program the software to reach the correct rate. Contact the manufacturer of your test machine for additional questions. For testing machines controlled manually, the position rate may be set by adjusting the hydraulic fluid control valve to establish the required 0.25 inch per minute position rate as prescribed by ASTM C579 Load Rate 2. We'll take you through the instructions for setting up your machine now. Measure the crosshead position rate over 30 seconds using a dial gauge positioned appropriately on your compressive testing machine. Step 1. Open the hydraulic control valve to an estimated first trial position. Situate the dial gauge between the load blocks. Allow the load blocks to contact the dial gauge and zero the gauge. Step 2. Turn on the machine and measure the position rate over 30 seconds. Adjust the valve to reach the preferred range of 0.120 to 0.130 inches of travel in 30 seconds. A 4% variation from the prescribed 0.125 inches is allowed in readings which can therefore be as high as 0.130 or as low as 0.120 inches of travel in 30 seconds. If the position rate is lower than 0.12, open the hydraulic valve more. If higher than 0.13, close the hydraulic valve slightly. Adjust the valve as needed until you record a rate between 0.12 and 0.13. Then take three more readings and average the results to confirm that the machine valve is set correctly for the machine to run at load rate 2 position rate with the machine in the unloaded condition. Record the valve position where the correct load rate 2 is observed. To summarize, the position rate measured on the micrometer over 30 seconds should be approximately 0.125 inches so that over 60 seconds, the position rate is 0.25 inches per minute, as prescribed by the ASTM C579 Load Rate 2 for a 2-inch epoxy cube. Again, this is for the machine in its unloaded condition. To test using a derived stress rate rather than a position rate, refer to our Tech Bulletin 210 for detailed instructions. Before each cube test, ensure the machine's load blocks are clean and debris-free. Then, set the cube between the load blocks by centering it between the plates and rotating it 90 degrees, ensuring a corner is pointed forward. It is now critically important to assess whether the test machine, set to run at load rate 2 when unloaded, will continue to run at the same rate when loaded with the sample. Fortunately, there is a relatively easy way to determine this. Five-star epoxy grouts typically break at between a 4 and 6% strain. When the machine runs in the loaded state at load rate 2, the material typically takes 20 to 30 seconds to break. This expected time to break is calculated as follows. 4% strain on a 2-inch cube equals 0.08 inches. If the test machine's actual position rate while loaded is the prescribed 0.25 inches per minute, the machine head will travel that 0.08 inches in 19.2 seconds. At a 6% strain to break, the sample will take 29 seconds to break. Therefore, if the sample takes longer than 30 seconds to break, there is likely an issue with the position rate of the compressive testing machine running in its loaded state. Increase the position or stress rate until the sample breaks in less than 30 seconds. By doing so, you can be sure that the test machine is running at load rate 2, even when loaded. Machines that run at position rates substantially slower than the prescribed 0.25 inches per minute while loaded will yield artificially low compressive strengths. Five Star Products will make samples of prepared epoxy grout cubes available upon request to be used for machine calibration. Following the test, record the compressive strength results in pounds per square inch by dividing the load at failure by the cross-sectional area. For more information, refer to ASTM C579. Thank you for taking the time to learn the proper procedures for compressive strength testing of Five Star Epoxy Grouts. Engineering and technical support are available. Please get in touch with us at 1-800-243-2206 in the U.S. or Canada or plus 1-203-336-7900.